into 19, in 1820s renowned upper class girl. Who would have predicted that this child would become a woman who would change nursing midwifery and indeed healthcare forever? But that's what she did. But how did she do this? Did she do it by mischief or by fighting hard to get exactly what she wanted? Was she a diva? <laughs> in 1837 to serve, she rejected the norms of her privileged life, but to her mother and sister's disgust, she used her education and powerful position to serve the poor and help the sick. But the ways in which she went about this, today scholars wonder and still discuss. I would argue that to reject the expected norms of the 18th century role, expected of a woman, would have required guts and tenacity particularly as she remained kind society. Medical officers tried endlessly to discredit her, undermining her writings on caring for the sick. It was only her political awareness choosing her camp as a counter-attack within politics that Kate kept her safe and secure. Being a leader as a woman in these times meant that you really knew how to play the man's game. Yet at no time did she actually side herself with women. She described herself in the masculine, a man of action, openly writing that she had never met a woman who had helped her cause. And when Bond came along, in the form of a mixed-race Afro-Caribbean woman, Mary Seacole, she rejected her. And to this day, that still causes problems, for me anyway, about the nature of Florence Nightingale. She treated her nurses cruelly in the camp hospitals, locking them up when not on duty and when they weren't caring for the sick. However, you must know that it was worthy of working in the workhouses, the only women that could do these roles were those who were fallen. They were the drunks, they were the prostitutes who sought refuge in such places to survive. So Florence's actions in trying to protect her nurses could be seen within the historical perspective in which she was living, particularly against the ravages of male students, medics, and also patients. So Florence, who was a brilliant mathematician and statistician, and I would argue was the founder of Health Outcomes, used this to every advantage that she could. She unashamedly told it as it was, politically lobbying for the development of public health reform. Now, upper-class women could enter a respectful level into, into a worthy job, shadowing Europe where nuns previously were the only women that could carry out such work. Stay with me. <laughs> My hands are cold. Can I get this over? Yes. So, devil or diva? I would actually argue that she was both and they were in very large portions because there were no small, small portions for Florence. A woman of her time, fighting endlessly for her cause, by default became others' causes. Mischievous and maybe manipulative, but fighting to get her own way. And you could argue that her spoiled or privileged background it had already enabled her to be a diva. She managed to get nursing to a level of respectability within society. And in the year when nursing has become a degree-only profession, Nurses and all of us in our Faculty of Health and Life Sciences have much to celebrate. Maybe to make a difference in the world, we all need to be mischievous. We all need to be inquiring, willing to have the debate, be right, be wrong, but to have the courage to go the extra mile. And that's something that we should all be proud of. Have a great day today.